So it's uh, quite clear that when we talk of left in government, we refer to the leaders and parties which were able to take power in the main post in government and have been using that post to advance their agenda of socialist change. Perhaps I can just talk about lessons and experience and the dream that uh, we will be able to do uh, what is happening now in uh, many parts in Latin America. Because right now, our presence in the government is only in the periphery of the government. It is actually limited to a few party list uh, seats in the lower house of Congress. Seats that number about 50 compared to the 234, or right now it will be 237 seats available to the representatives of the ruling classes. So, uh, for instance, in the Philippines, we're able to, since 1998, we're able to get uh, two seats uh, in that uh, Congress, in that lower. government, but I don't think we can talk about them as the left in government, because uh, the government uh, that they've been dealing with right now uh, is a government that is uh, the, administ the chief administrator of an unabashedly neoliberal program. So uh, I hate uh, talking, criticizing people not here, but I think even if you invite Ronald Lamas, he will not come here. So perhaps I'll just, uh, I'll just talk about, uh, I'll talk about him because if you, he's now in government, uh, in cabinet position, and if you Google Ronald Llamas, my name would come in uh, as a critic of uh, Llamas because I, I was uh, interviewed by the social media uh, during the time that they uh, started this uh, cooperation, this alliance coalition uh, with the Noi Noi government and I raised the problem of co-optation uh, in, in, in the government of uh, Noy Noy Aquino, uh, which is, uh, of course, you know, as everyone knows, elite-dominated and a very friendly government uh, uh, with the United States. I said during that interview that Akbayan has now found its final resting place and its fortunes are now completely tied up to the rise and fall of the Aquino regime. That still is the case right now. And I still believe, but I still believe that the challenge to the left is to present a genuine alternative to the capitalist system and that a truly socialist alternative can best and only be developed today from without the bourgeois the regime uh, rather than from within. So sections of the left in the Philippines, I think, are still making the same mistakes again. Like in the previous alliance uh, with sections of the left, with the Gloria Macapagal Arroyo administration, that was the previous administration, uh, during the so-called EDSA II uh, uprising. But that was, uh, fortunately, immediately discontinued by the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines and the national uh, democratic organizations that, uh, that worked with them. So uh, I think uh, uh, the, the, the problem with these alliances is that we, we cannot call them left in government. These are mere alliances 
uh, with, with, uh, with bourgeois forces that actually make use of the left to prettify their rule in the country. The left is not the defining force in these alliances, and it is merely a prop, nothing more, nothing less, in order to support the neoliberal agenda of the bourgeois uh, regime. So uh, I think uh, we, we, uh, I can, there are two main lessons uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, we can project in this, uh, in this uh, participation, in, uh, intervention uh, in the, in the uh, government that we had been uh, doing. And one that I can immediately think of is that we have to aim at the top. There is no use in being a mere spectator in the grand ballroom of the ruling class. If we do this, the most we can do is to hoot and holler, raise our fists and shout invectives. But in the end, they will just continue and get away with their festivities. So others have said that we have just to build our forces at the base so that by and by, we can master a sizable force that will be enough to, to win the big seats in government later on. But this is not, I understand how the experiences in Latin America or in Nepal would show us. This is the advice from NGOs, which are content to sit in the sidelines and take the path of least resistance. This is again hooting and hollering in the ballroom while the ruling classes dance their way to the banks. As uh, experiences show, this evolutionary path of resistance has gotten them nowhere. The left has to break with this NGO style or cycle of existing merely to survive. We have to be bold as the crisis and the critical conditions we face today allow us to be so. So our party, the PLM, we've got a registration as a national political party only in September 2012. Previously, we were just contesting in the party list. As a national political party, we can now contest officially the top positions from the president down. And so a week after we've got that registration in September 2012, we were given two days to rush and register our candidates for the May 2013 elections. We had managed to contest some seats in the Senate and in Congress, including, all, again, a party list seat and some seats in the local government. Uh, and luckily, our party, mem party member candidates did not get any seat, except for our allies in some areas but we had more luck in the barangay or village elections that followed in October. So this next election, which is going to be a presidential, a parliamentary, and a local uh, election, which will be held in 2016, this time we will be bold to build a, 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 complete, uh, a, a, a complete lineup and contest the whole run-up. And uh, this is also because uh, there is now a new electoral alliance that has been formed uh, recently. This is the ATIN Alliance with the uh, Partido Lakas ng Masa, our party. ATIN stands for Alliance for Truth, Integrity, and Nationalism. The people there basically ran as candidates in the last election as senators. The, the one talking is a senatorial candidate, and the, and the people in the table, the long table, also were uh, former uh, senatorial candidates who ran in the uh, last elections but did not make it. And then, of course, there's a grouping of the mass organizations that are now part of this alliance. The PLM, our party, is in the center of this alliance. And uh, the alliance is uh, trying to build now a slate of candidates that will run in the 2016 elections from top down, from pre presidency to the parliament members to local posts. The main platform of this alliance is uh, uh, alliance against uh, political dynasties. The political dynasties mean the rule of the political clans, those who wield economic and political power all over the Philippines and who have made it their business to be in government and those who made government its own business or businesses. So in a way, the alliance is an attempt to group together all those who have long been fighting the political dynasties or the ruling class representatives in their own areas. 
The Alliance is aiming to strengthen the LEX capability nationwide and to build a spread that will contest all of the 237 electoral districts in the 81 provinces all over the Philippines. The Alliance is basically around the fight against the political dynasties and there are two main forces that are starting to take this fight, to take up this fight. One is the social institution of the church, which is beginning to resist government policies and actions that are anti-poor. I will have to show you one uh, photo that uh, comrades want me to show, and this is basically me. <laughs> what am I doing in the church? Well, I have not become a priest. <laughs> But I'm, uh, 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 this is what we've been doing lately. We've been going around in an alliance with the church against the political dynasty. We've been talking to the bishop because the church hierarchy, the Catholic Bishop Conference of the Philippines, has decided to campaign against political dynasty. So right now, my uh, dilemma every Sunday is uh, because I'm meeting the bishops, whether to kiss their hands, because that is what you do when you're in front of the bishops, or to make the sign of the cross during breakfast with them. And uh, that's the dilemma that we have to <laughs> face in this kind of alliance. This is an alliance that is quite important because basically the church is the only institution that has the capacity to put up a fight against political dynasties. They have dioceses and they have parishes in the municipalities and the church would be like 10 churches in one municipality alone. So you would have a, a broad, uh, broad base that you can put up in, uh, uh, in order to uh, campaign uh, in that area. So that's quite an important alliance. Uh, and we're building that uh, together with the, with the uh, church. I know the church, we, we, uh, I know we, we have just, the church uh, campaigned against the reproductive health care in the Philippines while we campaign for the reproductive health care in the Philippines. So there's been, because the church, the church hierarchy, uh, of course, has, has, uh, uh, has taken up a pro-life position while we've taken up a pro-choice uh, position. And that is very clear that we disagree on that point. But the uh, reproductive health care bill has passed, has managed to pass. This is the first step in the fight for women's liberation in the Philippines. And uh, this is just a mere uh, first step, but it's a big uh, step for us. And uh, the charts, because somehow the, the bill has been uh, watered down uh, by, uh, by, uh, by, by Congress, so the charts also felt that it, it had won the fight. So it's a sort, some sort of like a win-win uh, situation. So we, we told them, okay, let's, uh, let's put that aside now. Because if you think you've won, we've also won that round, so it's now equal. So we can now go to the main business, which is the fight against political dynasty, where we can all unite. And so that is how uh, it's going right now. And I think it's important to build that uh, with them. Because the church in the Philippines also has a tradition of uh, fighting against the dictatorship during the uh, Marcos period. And, uh, and basically, when we talk of the church, we're not talking of just the hierarchy. We're talking of the priests and nuns who are actually, we're now finding out, still willing to fight and be with the people in the fight against the dynasty and in other uh, social issues. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, I think the second lesson right now is that uh, we cannot just fight in the electoral arena, and that's what I've been saying, that, uh, that we have to fight, uh, we have to, to, we have to mobilize, continue to mobilize the masses, and in order to do this, we need to put forward clear and immediate alternatives, not only to the political system, but to the entire socio-economic, social-political system, which is the one in crisis now. And this is where our need to popularize the alternative, sociali uh, alternative system, socialism, comes in. This is uh, Bayanihan Socialismo. This is basically our, uh, our attempt to be in line with what is happening in Latin America right now, uh, to popularize socialism and to give it a local color. Bayanihan in the Philippines means solidarity. Uh, it means the coming together of people in support of each other without expecting monetary reward or payment. 
People today understand it as a long-time practice of our ancestors during the communal period and something that is akin to communal spirit. Through the years, Bayanihan has long been replaced by relationships that are mediated by money. So the remaining variation of Bayanihan today is when people in the rural community get together to assist each other during the planting or harvesting season. The popular depiction of Bayanihan is when community people help out a member in carrying the entire house for moving to another place, like this photo of uh, Bayanihan. But in the recent calamities that have hit the Philippines, such as the recent Yolanda a super typhoon that killed around 10,000 people, the word Bayanihan was again used repeatedly to refer to people giving out whatever they have to help those in need. Even the capitalists in the elite government called for Bayanihan and sent relief materials in support to the typhoon survivors. But their Bayanihan was only for a limited period. period. After a week, they stopped it and called on the people to return back to the capitalist mode of working and paying for whatever they need. So in linking up socialism with the Bayanihan spirit, all we are saying or we are projecting is not, why not make Bayanihan a social system that occurs 24-7 or 12 months a year? Why not reinstitute a system where society's wealth is not privately owned but redistributed to everyone in need? And I think by giving socialism a local color, it also gives us the, 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 the uh, uh, chance to talk about, to link up our own local experiences, our own local culture to the struggle for socialism, our indigenous culture, which is all, also what is happening in Latin America. In Bolivia, they call it the Bolivarian socialism. In, uh, in uh, Ecuador, they call it the Buen Vivir socialism. Uh, in uh, in uh, Venezuela, uh, in Bolivia, I mean, it's a communitarian socialism. In uh, Venezuela, they call it the Bolivarian socialism. So. In the Philippine setting, uh, we, we want to give it a local color because, you know, socialism is not, uh, the, the problem with the, the problem we, we, we encountered when discussing, projecting socialism with the people is that they think that is, a, that is an alien thing. They, they think it is a foreign thing that is, quite, that is imposed from the outside. But it's not true because, uh, you know, uh, 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 this is something that is also comes from the local experience because the concept of Bayanihan is much more egalitarian than the concept of democracy, for instance. Democracy is Eurocentric. Democracy comes from the Greek experience, and we know that democracy means the democracy for the free men, and it's a, literally the free men, and those who have slaves, the slave owners. So they uh, do not include the whole people. Bayanihan is something more, the community. Uh, spirit is, is a something more egalitarian than the Eurocentric concept of democracy. And this is, uh, uh, this is, so basically, socialism is also a national movement as much as it is an international uh, movement. So that's why uh, this is uh, something that uh, is, uh, uh, we have discussed in the last uh, convention of the PLM. Uh, uh, we, we had a discussion on the electoral uh, participation in 2016, but we also have a discussion on Bayanihan Socialismo, and the convention did not vote on it because we would want to continue the discussion, but decided to adapt it uh, 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 in a way to open up the public discussion so uh, the socialists in the Philippines can discuss socialism, something like in the mode of what the socialism that is happening in Latin America. And for that, we have also uh, the, the, the experiences of Latin America as a very good uh, experience that sort of guides us uh, in this thing. And uh, in doing this, Bayanihan socialism also masters both the national movements and the international movements that are necessary in the advancement of the socialist struggles and socialist advocacies. And when we talk of national movement, or the national, you know, when we link it up with the national movement, so the nationalist movement, this is something that is quite also progressive in the third world situation. The national movements there are basically anti-colonial and anti-imperialist. 
So it's an important thing to talk about the struggles that we have made in the past against the colonialism and against imperialism and link it up with the continuing struggle of the people towards socialism. That's why in this uh, calendar that we've made, that we have distributed to our branches and that distributed uh, quite widely, the main photo depicts the hero Andres Bonifacio, the national hero Andres Bonifacio, the one who started the revolution against Spain. So this is also somehow our, our attempt to link up the struggle that is happening right now to the struggles that have been started by our uh, uh, four uh, uh, years, our uh, heroes uh, in the past, and to make all these things quite acceptable uh, to the people too, and uh, do not to, do not to put too much uh, uh, too much problem in terms of discussing it, because in the past. We have had discussions of socialism, which is more like you know a discussion on on uh, uh, on uh, values, uh, price and profit, and uh, all those, uh, which are quite scientific discussion, which is important. But because the church, for instance, the Catholic church, for instance, also have some kind of uh, two levels kind of discussion among the among, among its faithful. One is the popular discussion, which is done in catechism school. The other one is the discussion which is done in higher school, which is more a discussion on, you know, on, on all the uh, faith and religious belief. Perhaps what we are doing right now is just we're starting with the catechism type of discussion. But this is important because it gets the message across. And once the message is, uh, uh, is, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, understood, and then I think it will be easier for us to, then to talk about uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, alternative, and by doing so, we make the alternative also very immediate, because socialism, in our experience, is seen as something like uh, a thing that is quite that will happen in the future. This is the agenda now, and that is also the point that we're uh, we're trying to put across. So socialism has to be uh, 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 put out very clearly as an alternative to the neoliberal capitalism that is happening right now. So thank you.